I have here on my screen some GPS data that were acquired from a walking track and also from a driving track, but all within the one file. And when I've imported them into ArcGIS, I've used a point-based format. I use this because this allows me to keep all the attribute information from each of the points. So as you can see, I've got the latitude, longitude, their X and Y projected data there as well as the altitude and the time when each point was acquired along that particular track. Now this is really, really important information because what I actually want to be able to do is to extract the speed that I was walking and driving along the route. But to do that, we've got a few different operations that we need to conduct first. So the first thing is that what I want to do is actually to be able to have a line file of, of the, the area that I traveled that day. So I'm going to use the points to line function in ArcGIS to be able to do this. So as my input features, I'm going to put my track points there and I'm just going to give myself an output feature class name as well. So once you've used your input and output feature classes in there, all you need to do is click OK and ArcGIS will run that for you and you'll, you'll come out with a line file. But if you open the attribute table for that, you see that there's only one record there. So you've lost all that important information that was contained within the point data. So the next stage of what we need to do is to actually split that line back up into individual segments and then we can reattach the point data information to this. So to do this, we're going to use the split line function. Use the track line as our input and give ourselves an output file there as well. Once that operation is run, we'll be able to open up the attribute table and see that we now have 600 individual records instead of the single record that we had previously. So each of those records should now correspond to a, a, a small seg segment, segment within, within the line, which, which we're, we're then, go, then going to attribute with, with the information from those points. If we right click on split line, go to joins and relates, and join and we're going to use a spatial join here so this is going to attribute the closest point to each segment of the line so we're going to look at joining it to the track data which are those individual points and we're going to take the information of the data of the point that is closest to it and allow arc to run the process now once we do this, we'll be able to open the attribute table of our new file and you can see now that we have all of that point information associated with each of the individual line segments instead of what we had before of being essentially an empty attribute table. So our, our next, the next thing that we need to do is to actually work out the distance of each of those segments because this is going to allow us to calculate the speed. So as you can see, it's actually already got a distance, a distance field in our table here. And if we right click on that and go to calculate geometry, and we're going to calculate the length of each of those individual segments here. We can use the coordinate system of the data source because that's going to be one that's actually going to give us decent distance information without it being too distorted. And in meters should be fine as well. So if we click OK here, we should find that our attribute table gets updated with that new information. So you should be able to see that if you scroll through your attribute table, you get the information on the distance for each of those individual segments. Now, if you wanted, you, should, you'd be, you could symbolize that line according to the length of individual distances. Now, one thing, if you notice in the attribute table, we have the, the time field here. And what we actually want to be able to do is to understand the, the time that was elapsed between each of the points that were taken and so that's what we're going to be able to use to calculate the speed of each individual segment. 
Now I find this, this is actually a really simple thing to do in Excel as opposed to in Arc. So what we're going to do is to jump across to Excel to do a small calculation there. But what I'm first going to do is to actually give myself another column here that's going to accept the speed information once I calculate it. So I'm going to give myself a new field. I'm going to call it speed. And a short integer is going to be fine for that as well. So I'm going to click OK. So I've given myself an empty field and I'm going to populate that soon. Now if I jump over to Excel, I can open the database file that sits behind this shape file. And that's the one that I'm going to use to calculate my speed. This looks the same as the attribute table does in ArcGIS. You'll see that you've got all the same headings and all the information contained in each of the columns. Now what I'm going to do first of all is to save this as an Excel spreadsheet so that I don't corrupt the shape file by altering some of the data that's sitting in its database. So I go through File, Save As and I'm just going to go right ahead and save that as an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so now it's an Excel spreadsheet. I can move things around and I'm not going to cause any problems with my shapefile. So the real column that I'm interested in manipulating here is this time column. So I'm going to move these columns out of the way for a moment. What I want to do first of all is to separate out the time from the date because I know that I only collected data on one particular day and so that date information isn't relevant to me. So I'm going to split this out by using the text to columns operation and I'm just going to cut it into two columns based on the fact that I know that there's a space between the date and the time and that's the format of the data so I'll finish that up you'll see now I've got the the date in one column and that's irrelevant to me so I'm not worrying about the formatting there and I've got the time in another column now what I want to know is the time that's elapsed between any two any two points in time. So all I'm going to do is subtract time 1 from time 2. And I hit equals on that and I find that I've got 6 seconds. That's the difference between those two particular times. And I can copy that down by either dragging like this or I can just bring my bar all the way down to the bottom find the bottom of my data set, highlight that column and control D will copy that formula all the way down there for me. I'm going to give myself a zero time at that first point. Now what I want to do now is to be able to do further calculations on that time and, and Excel does some funny little things with the formatting so I'm going to actually separate out the, the minutes and the seconds there that have elapsed between each of my points. So what I'm going to do here is to use the minute operator and click on that one and enter and then I'm going to use the, the same sort of thing um, but just get my seconds here as well. Okay, so once again, if I copy that formula down, you'll see that I've separated out the minutes and the seconds, and these are now just numbers. And I'm going to copy that all the way down to the bottom of my data sheet there. Now, just in case I did have any points where there was minutes also elapsing between points, I now want to just make sure that I capture that information all within one unit. So I'm going to work with seconds here. So to convert my, my minutes to seconds, I'm going to multiply by 60. And then I'm going to add the remaining seconds here. So that final column will give me the total number of seconds that elapsed between my points or segments. Um, of my line in this case. So now what I have is I've got a column here which is the total seconds and I also have a distance column so that's going to allow me to calculate my speed. So a, a simple speed calculation would just be the distance divided by the time but I need to be careful about the units that I'm interested in because 
I, I maybe I want to measure in meters per second or maybe I want to go in kilometers per hour for example so if I'm going to go in meters per second I'll simply use my formula of distance because I know that's in meters and divide by the total seconds that's elapsed that will give me my meters per second but I know that I also was driving my car in this in this um, while collecting this data so kilometers per hour is a more useful unit for me to use so to convert my seconds to kilometers I'm going to multiply so my seconds to, to hours I multiply by 60 by 60 and to convert my meters to kilometers I'm going to divide by a thousand so once I copy that all the way down to the bottom of my spreadsheet there you'll see that I now have values of kilometers per hour for each of my individual segments and hopefully you won't find any areas where I was speeding just make that one a zero okay so now the final stage of this is just to get that information directly back into ArcGIS and it's actually quite simple the first thing that we do is to come back to ArcGIS and we want to start editing this attribute table so we're going to bring up the editing toolbar and go to start editing and you'll know that you're in editing mode because you'll be able to see that the that the heading of each of these fields actually goes white instead of gray so what I want to do is I'm going to come back to Excel I'm going to grab this column and control C to copy it and then when I come over to arc I'm going to click on the column so you'll see that it's highlighted in cyan and simply press Control V and that should copy my data across so you'll now see that I have my speed in kilometers per hour for each of my segments of my line